Good day, everyone. My name is Fabrice Papiam Bakashala, PhD students from the University of Miami. Today, uh, I'll be presenting on characterization of extraction emission of uh, particles and gases from a single pack of electronic cigarette smoke. Since their introduction like two decades ago, uh, the use of electronic cigarettes have been uh, exponentially increasing, uh, while the use of the traditional tobacco cigarettes is decreasing, as shown on the figure on the left hand side. And this is worrisome because of the use, this, using, this usage includes a good percentage of uh, underage, meaning that middle and high schoolers are shown on the right hand side, and they have up to 60% of eighth graders that have reported to <clears throat> use uh, cigarettes according to an NIH report uh, that we saw uh, recently. And also talking about numbers, about 10% of US adults have reported to regularly or occasionally debate, whereas 30% uh, of uh, high schoolers uh, vape, vape electronic cigarette products as well. And altogether, we have about more than 5 million middle and high schools that have uh, reported to have faked in the past uh, 30 days of uh, the interview that was conducted. This situation leads to a lot of uh, uncertainty, confusion in regulations, bans that we've heard in the past few years. And since the introduction, again, uh, a lot of uh, generations or types of uh, devices have been uh, evolved, have been developed. Uh, this is mainly to try to increase the quality of the users um, and uh, as well as like intensifying or increasing the market. Of these four generations, the question that was asked was like, was the electronic cigarette safer than about cigarette studies were conducted at the beginning when these devices were introduced and found out that yes, the electronic cigarettes, by eliminating the combustion of the tobacco, we um, we we go into safety. However, is it absolutely safe? That's the question that uh, I've been asked. And to answer that question, a lot of uh, analytical um, chemistry and toxicological profile need to be established. And these studies uh, led to analysis of the electronic cigarette smoke and a lot of pollutants have been reported, including metals. And um, we also conducted the same study in our lab to try to quantify these metals in primary and second hand aerosols, as well as to identify with what's the oxidation state of the metal emitted by these devices. Uh, in details, uh, just to briefly what we did and what we found, we found uh, we used three uh, different devices um, representing three, two generations, the third and the fourth, uh, with the jewel and the and the vapor for life representing the fourth generation, the port type type uh, devices, whereas the hoop will represent the more type, which is uh, the third generation. We found like five main metals that were consistently high in concentration across all the samples that we collected on the filters. And then we also found that uh, the range is very wide among concentration of these metals. And we, uh, I, we hypothesize that this is mainly because of the materials that are used that are of various natures, as well as the uh, mechanisms um, to release uh, these aerosols. And also, uh, we saw that chromium, manganese, and nickel are above the regulated. Uh, daily limits in tech if we assume that a single individual uh, for 163 uh, baths per day. On the uh, oxidation number, we conducted XPS on the filters that collected these aerosols and found that most of these metals are in their uh, stable uh, oxidation states, that is the least toxic oxidation state, uh, except for chromium at 60 watt. On that, that uh, we found uh, chromium 6, which is carcinogenic, which is uh, a little bit worrisome. Uh, we saw that the device power did not really uh, influence the oxidation state. And also, um, 
the metals are present, uh, present regardless of the power that is used, including at five watt, which is the lowest um, of five, uh, the lowest power that we used. Now the question one would ask, like, where are these metals found, and how big are these particles carrying these metals? So uh, for that, we can ask the question: What's the particle size distribution? As soon as the uh, the path is emitted, and also how does this particle size distribution vary with time during their emission? Another question that one would ask is like. Uh, what is the deposited the deposition pattern of these aerosols as soon as they are in air? Because remember, as soon as the uh, device uh, uh, the path is released, uh, it's immediately inhaled into the respiratory system. And that a particle cell distribution that we need to capture as soon as the uh, is the, the path the e cigarette is activated. We need to see how much uh, and what's the mass of the particles that are emitted in the respiratory system. And also, beside the particles, are there any gases that are contained in these devices? So we want to look at the mixing ratios of the gases that are emitted. Therefore, the aim of this study was to identify saturation emission, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, of the aerosols, as well as the gases from uh, the electronic cigarette try to elucidate the formation of and the formation mechanism, as well as to assess any potential health risks that uh, can be found. We use uh, this setup trying to, because of we wanted to dilute, um, we use the DMS spectrometer. Uh, we diluted uh, the e cigarette path using a flow, um, a flow editor. Um, uh, by combining with filtered air, compressed filtered air, using the uh, setup and our parking protocols, including the ISO 2768 uh, standard parking protocols, which uh, is defined as the, um, the path at the duration of three seconds. And the volume of the path is about 55 ml, and the path interval is about 60, it's a minute. The dilution ratio is a uh, 1 to 30. Uh, based on our calculations here. And secondly, for the gases analysis, we uh, use a similar uh, experimental setup, but this time around the dilution is auto-regulated in situ of the Oriba, uh, the Oriba device that we used. And the results show here the three brands that we tested, the Jewel, the Hughes, and Popo. The Jewel and the Hughes are of the latest generation. They are poor type devices, whereas the FUPU is uh, the third generation. We can see that the concentration of our metals are ultra fine, that is under uh, 100 nanometer, as shown here, where we have more than 50% of our particles in terms of number concentration. Uh, you can see that for all the brands that we tested, uh, below 100 nanometer have the highest number concentration of uh, the metals. So also, um, with time, we saw that uh, there is an initial uh, high concentration of smaller particles of about 10 nanometers for all the devices, uh, uh, like the views and the VUPO, whereas for the jewel, we saw like a continuous, continuously across the entire path this high concentration of these uh, 10 nanometers nanoparticles. And then we plot the corresponding um, uh, surface area uh, distribution since this, this parameter is very important in toxicology. Um, and we saw that unlike for the number concentration, the total surface area of the larger particles that is above 100 nanometers was had the majority of contribution to the total surface area, which was uh, in the order of 1,000 uh, square millimeters per uh, square space cubic centimeter. The same uh, trend is observed for the mass concentration, mass distribution, where the total mass um, of larger particles above 100 nanometers uh, was the most contributing uh, to the mass of the overall 
uh, but you have uh, overall errors all in inside the path. So the takeaway message here is that larger particles within the path, regardless of the time they're emitted within the path, have the highest mass and surface area contribution, right? even though they have the lowest number concentration. We look at the effect of power as well, try to see if on the third generation, the VUCU device, and then the, the message here is that increasing power, we increase the number concentration of the larger particles as shown here, taking a like at five one, where we, <clears throat> we have uh, a larger concentrations of uh, the larger particles above 100 nanometer. The same is true for the area. What we observed earlier that the larger particles have the higher contribution to the total surface area in our case, in the order of 1,000 um, square, square millimeters per uh, cubic centimeters. The same is true for the same. We also look at the path duration and found out that uh, the longer the path, the higher the total surface area and the higher the uh, concentration with high order of magnitude difference. So the longer the path, the higher the total uh, surface area uh, and the higher the exposure, as well as the higher the mass of the particles that are emitted. In terms of the distribution between smaller particles, ultrafine and the larger particles, the same trend that we reported earlier, we observed regardless of the path duration. And then we use the ICRP to uh, assess what's the concentration of the uh, particles or the mass of the particles that are deposited in the three different areas of the um, respiratory tract. Here we split the respiratory tract into three main areas, the extra thorax area, which is the upper part of the respiratory tract, the tetrabronchial, which is the um, middle one, and the alveolus, which are the deep uh, alveolus inside the lungs. On the Top panel here, we show the deposition fraction, uh, the size-based deposition fraction of inside each of these uh, each each of these parts of the respiratory system. We took one um, size distribution and plotted the number concentration as well as the mass concentration. The second panel, and then combining deposition fraction and the mass distribution we're able to plot here the mass distribution of the deposited particles inside uh, the uh, respiratory tract. And the summary of this exercise gave us the mass of uh, the deposited particles within each part of the respiratory tract. For a single path, we assume a volume of, of the path of 555 milliliters as I mentioned in uh, the experimental setup, but it was worrisome at 60 watt, for example, we saw that we have a very high concentration, a very high mass of particles that are deposited in the alveoli sacs. And then we also assessed the uh, inorganic gases in the e-cigarette aerosols. And we see that based on our instrument as shown in these figures, we tested for total hydrocarbon, the noxious CO2 and CO, and found that peak concentrations of these uh, gases reported in the table below, as well as the um, <clears throat> some of them are above the uh, daily uh, limits that's set by the, the OSHA um, based on the eight hour uh, total weighted average. With that, uh, we can conclude that the particles in uh, electronic cigarettes, ultrafine particles that is under 100 nanometer dominate the cigarette emissions regardless of the time that they are emitted and the concentration range between 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 10 uh, cubic centimeters. 
and have the potential to be inhaled and deposited deep into the um, alveoli sacs. High power increase the particle size and concentration and mass of the particles, with the, especially with the FUPU device at 60 watts. And using the ICRP model, we're able to estimate that 50-60% of particles go to the alveoli sacs. This is mainly due to the irregularities of the size distribution uh, up to 25% in the inter in, in tracheobronchial region and only 35% in the structural region. Uh, carbon monoxide and noxes from a single pop exceeded the OSHA exposure limit, indicating that, yes, potential acute um, risks, especially at high power setting. With that, I'd like to thank NSA for funding this work, uh, my lab, and I'm um, happy to take questions.